Welcome to the clustering and dimensionality reduction exercise. We're going to take a number of handwritten digits and we're going to try to find patterns in the data to see which digits are similar. And we're going to use dimensionality reductions to actually be able to visualize the data and to find the most important dimensions, that is those with the highest explained variance. And we're going to explore clustering algorithms to find these different patterns. Like always, we start with making some imports. We're going to take NumPy and we're going to use it as NP. And we're going to use matplotlib as PLT. We want to use the handwritten digits data set. And we're lucky in that scikit-learn actually come packaged with the data set. So there is sklearn data sets. And inside of that package, there is a function called load digits. And that allows us to load the handwritten digits. So we're going to assign the digits. So this is a dictionary. So you can look at the different keys. And you can see there's data, target, target names, images, and a description. So we're first going to consider the description. And that's a description of the data set. If you do the print around it, it also prints it more nicely formatted. For some reason, I don't actually know. But what we see here is that we have a data set of handwritten digits. So what is an attribute in this data set? An attribute is an integer pixel in the range of 0 to 16. So these are grayscale values of the handwritten digits. So we have an 8 times 8 pixel large image of the handwritten digit in grayscale values that range from 0 to 16. You can also find some more references here where the data set is from and where it's used. So the first thing that we want to do is pre-process our data. And for that, we want to standardize our data set along the axes. And as I'm going to explain in a lot more detail in the lecture on exploratory data analysis, it's best if you take your data and you center it to the mean and then component-wise scale it to unit varying. We won't go into much detail here. That's for a later lecture, but it will actually help our processing a lot and will also speed up the process. So I'd still like to do this. So what you need to do here is you're going to use the function scale from the pre-processing uh, package in scikit-learn. And we're going to assign data to the scaled digits data. So we can look at an individual image now. So let's look at the 11th image. And these are the values. Again, they are scaled in that they're centered to the mean, the mean value. So you remove the mean. And then you have everything in unit variance. And that allows us to see the differences between the data points in a lot more detail. We're also going to just extract for our purposes the number of samples, that is the instances that we have, and the number of features. So again, the instances or the number of samples are the number of handwritten digits, so that is 5620, and the number of features or the number of attributes is 64. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at different digits. and we're not just looking at one, so we're looking at a range from 0 to 5. And we're going to instantiate a new figure for each of the digits. And we're going to specify the size. It's really weird in Matplotlib that they have it in inches. You don't need to understand it, just copy the 3 3. It's usually a good bet. What's important is that we have this inshow function in Matplotlib. And we can then give each of the values 
in our data set the images and plot this. We're going to set the color map to grayscale values. You can play a bit with this, but usually because we know that this data is actually grayscale values, it's the best bet. And we're also going to specify the interpolation to nearest so that we can actually see the handwritten digits properly. So if you run this, and if you don't forget the in, then you can see the handwritten digits here. And as I said before, it's eight times eight pixels. And you can clearly see that this is a zero, a one, two, three. Uh, we can also look at different values. Let's look at the hundredth and the others. And as you can see, these are pixel arrays of the different values. So we have a feeling of how the values look like. And what we're going to do now is we're going to first reduce this using dimensionality reduction, as I explained before, to take these 64 dimensional arrays into two dimensional arrays while preserving a lot of the information so that we can actually plot the different digits into D. And then we're going to use clustering algorithm to put them into groups to find similar digits. We're going to start with PCA, principal component analysis, and that's in the package decomposition. And we're going to reduce the data that we have. So then we're going to call this array the reduced data, and we're going to assign PCA with two dimensions. So we want to reduce the 64 dimensions in the data to two dimensions. And I'm going to show you now a shortcut. We're going to use the fit transform function. And that's the same as fitting a model and doing the predictions, but by doing fit transform, it does it in one go. It takes the data and it returns the changed data. So we take the images and we're going to train the principal component analysis model and we're going to assign the reduced data. So let's have a look at the data. This is the second image and we can see it has only two values now, right? So in the original data, it had 64 values and we reduced that using the explained variance to two dimensions that explain the most variance. Now that we have all the digits in two dimensions, we can actually plot all the digits and see which digits are close to each other in the plot, that is, which digits are most similar to each other, according to the principal component analysis. And for the plotting, I'm going to use this function. As you see, I'm a bit too lazy to type it out, but I'm going to explain it to you. So the plot data function takes our reduced data and it computes the minimum value plus some extra space and the maximum male value, both in the x dimension and the y dimension. And then it's plotting the reduced data for the x and y using black dots. So the k indicates black here because b is blue. We give it a nice title. We set the limitations of the graph and we also enable different ticks and then we're showing the plot so we define this so we can use the plot data function on the reduced data that we have and what you see here are all the handwritten digits represented as points in the space that is our principal component analysis and we're going to use this now to see how k-means is grouping the different handwritten digits. But this is the first part, the necessary part, the reduction of the dimensionality. So k-means is part of the package cluster. And as I explained to you, k-means has a hyperparameter, the k, which is the number of clusters, which we specify here. So 
we set this now to 10 uh, plus this. So that means our hypothesis is that we have 10 different groups in this data set. Now we know that these are the handwritten digits from 0 to 10, so it's quite a reasonable assumption that we can find 10 clusters here. But normally, this is an important hyperparameter. That is something that you need to experiment with, that you try out, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. It's a bit more an art than a science, let's say. So we're fitting our model here with the reduced data. And now we can make predictions where each of the handwritten digits belongs. So we can do k-means predict on the reduced data. And we're doing this for the first five. And we can see the first digit is assigned to the cluster two. The second is assigned to the cluster zero. The third one is assigned to the cluster two. And note that these, of course, don't automatically correspond to the handwritten numbers. These are just logical units that k means identified in the data. So it's your job actually to now inspect all the clusters and see which one of these numbers correspond to the numbers that we recognize. We can visualize this a bit to see how the space is subdivided. Again, I'm lazy and copy the function. Um, and I think it's easier if I show you the result first and explain the code then. Plot k means for the reduced data and k means. Other spaces. Here are the digits, the reduced digits that I showed you before. And we can see that we have the different clusters here in different colors. And the assumption, of course, is that this is all threes or any other number, this is all fives or any other number, but you can clearly already see that the distinction here is quite fuzzy. So we will explore a different dimensionality reduction technique that I showed you before, the TESNE, T-S-N-E, it's called TESNE, according to the person who invented it. Um, and we're going to see that this makes a much better distinction between, between the data. But first, I'm going to explain you the code. So what we do here is, again, we take the minimum and maximum x and y values from the reduced data. And then we're going to create this mesh grid that we're going to color. So we're computing a mesh grid now. And that's really similar to the linear space that we've seen before. But it's two-dimensional. It's a grid. Uh, and then again, it goes from the minimum x value to the maximum x value and the minimum y value, the maximum y value. And we're going to use this to see how the space looks like. So for each of the points, we're going to now make a prediction which cluster this would belong to. And that's basically the background. That's how the whole space of this vector space would be predicted by the k-means cluster. And we then plot this with an interpolation of nearest. And on top of that, we plot our individual points, right, the black dots, and the centroids of our system. And the centroids here are white axes, right? So the color is set to white and the marker is set to X. And these are the center points. And if you don't remember what that is, please revisit the lecture. But again, this is the central idea of k-means, right? The center points that we try to optimize so that it best subdivides the space. And as I told you before, the PCA k-means combination is a good starting point. It's also the mathematically simplest. So now we're going to use testny, and testny is not part of the package decomposition, but part of the package manifold. So sklearn manifold import testny, T-S-N-E. And we're going to assign the reduced data again. 
and we're going to set the number of components to two, like before, performing our fit transform on the data, and then we're computing another k-means cluster. And this is n clusters, that is the k, we set it to 10. We're going to fit the model again. And then we're going to plot our k-means. First we need the reduced data and the k-means distance. And as you can see, this takes a lot of time, a lot longer than with PCA, because TESNI is computationally more complex. And here finally, the result. You can see that TESNI actually gives us much nicer clusters to begin with that k-means can then identify, even though it's a comparatively simple algorithm as we've seen in the lecture. And you can use this to identify the clusters. And that's what I wanted to show you about these techniques. Again, you can use this with any kind of data. It doesn't have to be image data. You can also use this with text data. You can use this with a lot of other data. You can play a bit with the number of clusters. And it's important to note that I use dimensionality reduction in this particular case so that I have 2D values that we can compare so that you can see k-means is finding these clusters. You don't have to do this. You can easily um, train k-means on the non-reduced data, on the high dimensional data, and still have clusters. But then you have to inspect each of the different clusters by hand. But there's nothing wrong with that. So yeah, maybe use some own data, use some different data, the breast cancer data, for instance, to find clusters, or think about what unsupervised machine learning problem you could apply this to as part of your project. You can play a bit with the components, you can play a bit with the number of clusters, and yeah, I hope you have fun with this exercise.